Hello, this is Trevor from Telecom Training, and today our discussion will be on HDSL lines. There are many types of DSL lines, however, we'll take a brief look at ADSL and VDSL just for comparison purposes, and then we'll talk about HDSL lines. First, we're going to talk about ADSL and VDSL and how it works, and then we're going to get into Diagram number two, which talks about an HDSL line. Now, for an ADSL and VDSL line, they both work on the same line as the telephone, uh, two wires. You have a DSLAN within the central office attached to those two wires with a modem at the other end. Now, the way this works is that you have your internet signal coming in from the internet, and this is the digital signal. This digital signal is converted to analog by the DSLAN. You also have an analog signal coming in from the telephone switch to the DSLAN. So now you have two analog signals. The DSLAN would modulate these two signals and send them off on the telephone line. When these two signals are received by the spot splitter, the spot splitter would only allow the internet signal to go through to the modem and the voice signal to go through to the phone. When the modem receives the internet signal it would be a modulated signal so the modem have to demodulate that signal so the modem would go ahead and demodulate that signal and then convert it to digital and then send it off to the local area network everything is done in reverse coming from the modem back to the DSLAM the, the, the digital signal comes in from the local area network to the modem the modem will convert that signal to analog and then modulate that signal and send it off on the telephone line with the vo voice signal. When the DSLAM receives those signals, the DSLAM would demodulate the information and the data going to the internet would then be converted to digital and sent off to the internet and the voice signal will be sent directly to the telephone switch. Now for an HDSL line, you have two pairs of wires connecting an HLU in the central office to an HRU on the street. HLU stands for HDSL line unit and HRU stands for HDSL remote unit. The HRU is connected to a CSU which is located at the customer's premises. The CSU acts as an interface between the HRU and a router at the customer's premises. The standard distance between an HLU and an HRU is 3.6 kilometers and up. As I said before, the HLU is within the central office and it gets its power from the central office. And it also provides power to the HRU. It sends 130 volts down loop 1 to the HRU and 130 volts on loop 2 to the HRU. Now, without these voltages, the HRU would not power up. So both of these voltages are quite necessary in order for the HRU to work. There's no voltage going from the HRU to the CSU. The CSU is locally powered. We can add a voltage doubler to the line, increasing the distance between the HLU and the HRU to 7.2 kilometers. So every time you add a voltage doubler to the line, you increase the distance between the HLU and the HRU by 3.6 kilometers. So here we have added one voltage doubler, so the distance now is at 7.2 kilometers. Now we have added four voltage doublers, increasing the distance from 3.6 kilometers without any voltage doublers to 18 kilometers. So now the subscriber can be 18 kilometers away from the HLU. This is one of the advantages of using an HDSL line. With HDSL lines, unlike ADSL, the voice signal sent into the line is digital and the internet signal is also digital. And the speed is 1.544 megabits per second. And this is the constant speed. But unlike ADSL, you do not have a wide range of different speeds. With HDSL, all you have is one T1 speed, which is 1.544 megabits per second. Now, when data is sent into an HLU, 
Uh, it could be from voice or it could be from the internet, but that data is 1.544 megabits per second. The maximum speed of that data, it doesn't matter what it is, is 1.544 megabits per second. Now the HLU divides this data in two. It sends half of the data on loop one and the other half on loop two. Now when the HRU receives this data, it puts it back together as 1.544 megabits per second and send it off to the CSU on the receive side here. Now when the CSU receives this data, it acts as an interface between the HRU and the router. It has a T1 type interface on this side and an Ethernet interface on this side. So it sends the 1.544 megabits of data through to the router. Now data coming back from the router works in exactly the same way, just reverse. The information coming from the local area network the CSU will send it off to the HRU. When the HRU receives that information, it would divide that information in two, sending half on loop one and the other half on loop two. When the HLU receives that information, it will put the two signals back together and send it off to the internet or to the telephone switch or wherever that information is supposed to be going. Unlike ADSL or VDSL, HDSL uses a digital signal on loop one and loop two. This digital signal prevents any electromagnetic induction, which causes noise. This noise interrupts the data on a VDSL and the ADSL line, causing the speed to fluctuate. Digital data is not as susceptible to electromagnetic induction, so we don't have that fluctuation that we would get with an ADSL or VDSL line. So this is another advantage to using HDSL. And another advantage of HDSL is the fact that we have 1.544 megabits per second down and 1.544 megabits per second up. So we have the same speed in both directions. Unlike ADSL and VDSL, which we have different speeds. Usually the download on um, ADSL and VDSL is much higher than the upstream. With HDSL, you have the same speed in both directions. Now, if you take a look at the end here, what I'm trying to show here is time slots. An HDSL line, which is the T1 line, have 24 time slots and each time slot is 64 kilobits in size now so if there are 24 of these time slots here each one would be 64 kilobits in size you can actually attach a phone line to each one of these slots a phone line actually uses 64 kilobits of data so these slots being 64 kilobits in size is perfect for phone line. So you can attach a phone line to each one of these slots. So if you want to, you can have 24 phone lines attached to the entire T1, 24 slots. You have 24 slots at 64K each, which would be equal to 1.53 if you multiply 24 by 64. But that's short of 1.544 as you see here. But what we're missing is the eight framing bits. In order to get the information from one end to another, they gotta be in a frame. So you have eight bits that we use as a frame for that data. And that's how we get 1.544 megabits per second. Now, we, as I said before, we could use every slot here for a telephone line, or we can divide it up. We could use three slots for telephone line. We could use three or four slots for the internet. We can use and we can use other slots for other purposes and which I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. HDSL line is very versatile and, and that's basically one of the attractive things about this line. That's why a lot of businesses today are still using the T1 HDSL line in order to transport um, data from one point to another. Here in this slide, um, just trying to show you exactly how 
how HDSL lines are used. And they're primarily used by businesses in order to uh, send data from one point to another. We have two HDSL lines here, one in Toronto, Canada, and the other one in Vancouver, Canada. Let's talk about the one in Vancouver, Canada first. Now we have three time slots on the one in Vancouver, Canada, um, going back to the telephone switch. So we have three telephone lines being connected here for this business. Um, they're using three time slots for the internet. And they're also using three time slots connecting to a T3, which is going to uh, Toronto, Canada, which is connected to another HDSL line in Toronto, Canada. In Toronto, Canada, they have uh, four time slots going to the telephone switch. So for both of these HDSL lines, they're not using the maximum number of time slots. They still have um, many more time slots here because there are 24 altogether that they can assign to other purposes. So I'm just trying to show the flexibility that businesses have in using HDSL. They can decide exactly where they want to send their data. They don't have to send it all in one place like an ADSL or VDSL line going back to the internet. They can decide that they want to send, they only want to connect three time slots to a particular place. They can actually be connected to many other businesses here as well. You know, some people may say, um, you know, T1 lines are quite slow in comparison to an ADSL or VDSL line. Yes, that is true. But you got to look at apples and apples and apples and oranges. You got to look at what this business is using this T1 line for. A lot of these businesses are just using them for text, like to send invoices from one point to another. That kind of thing. They're not really sending um, high bandwidth things like voice and video. Uh, so these lines serve them quite well. And they're able to manipulate the channels uh, on the T1 to serve their purposes best. That's why businesses are still using HDSL T1 lines today in order to transmit their data from one city to another or across town or even to get to the internet because they may not this you may think that three time slots may not be enough but for some businesses it is because they don't require to actually get on the internet to to download large video files either so 1.544 megabits may work fine for this business and it's with some businesses if 1.544 megabits don't work fine they will get a second t1 in order to serve their purpose now I hope this video has been helpful to you and if you would like to see more videos like this one please feel free to click on the subscribe button below so that you'll be alerted as soon as our new videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching.